Good day, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for today's lecture in the online curriculum A to Z in Implant Dentistry. My name is Sasha Jovanovic. Today's lecture will be concentrating on anterior implant placement and specifically on multiple teeth, which as well from a surgical, from a restorative, as well as from a biological has considerations which we have to follow. Um, this lecture will follow nicely uh, the lecture which has been recorded on the basis of uh, anterior implant placement for single teeth. Now, first of all, we look at the classic indications. Um, uh, these multiple teeth in the anterior implant uh, placement, of course, always compared to like what we have with patients with fully dentulous patients. Now, um, most of our patients where we do multiple teeth um, are somewhat in the younger to middle age group. Um, this compares to the fully dentulous patients, which usually are the elderly patients who have lost teeth, either uh, through their like, you know, long-term use of teeth, disease, or trauma. But patients which have multiple teeth missing, maybe two, three, or four, uh, can be younger. Um, younger to maybe middle age. Just depends how their health care was, how their dental uh, IQ was. One area which we have to consider, which is very important, is when we think about anterior implant placement for multiple teeth, uh, very often we need advanced indications because um, we're looking for anterior implant placement. That usually means aesthetics. We're looking for optimal contour because it's multiple teeth, so we need some uh, tissue replacement. So we're looking at grafting. And often we also need some soft tissue. So these parts are similar to single teeth, but even more for multiple teeth because as soon as multiple teeth are missing, more bone and more soft tissue is lost. I would like to remind you again, and this is like very important, and here you can see now right away, two anterior implant treatments done for two different patients. The one patient on the left hand side has two implants placed for two missing center incisors. The patient on the right hand side had a trauma where, with which she lost four teeth, and these four teeth were replaced with four implants and a bridge. Please notice that in both indications, you're looking at the gingival level as being too apical, too high. You're looking, if you would see the x-ray, at bone loss due to like an inappropriate implant position, an insufficient amount being, of bone being present. And concurrently with this, we're seeing gingival loss and gingival pocketing. So to counter these failures, and I see unfortunately quite a few of those in my practice in Los Angeles, is that we have to like then go back to sometimes extreme measures by removing these implants. And then go back again to the original level of the ridge, and then you can see here that we have removed the implants through a surgical procedure. We have now taken off the bridge, and we have to start over again. But beautifully demonstrated now here is these are multiple teeth missing in the anterior and you can see already just by looking clinically that there is a big gap in this area. A lot of tissue is lost, a lot of bone is lost. So like, you know, this really is a problem uh, for this patient. So to redo this here, we have to graft bone, we have to add soft tissue and then we can do implants. Now, we know the results for single teeth. We know the results for multiple teeth. The partially dentulous are not different. So from a functional standpoint, they do very well. So you can easily comfort yourself, like I do with my patients, by telling them the evidence in the literature is strong. We have 95 plus percentile for five, 10, even 20 years of results. So this is a long-term treatment. The only problem, again, is aesthetics. So uh, we're focusing right now on anterior, so we want to focus on aesthetics. And this is important for us to do because the results with aesthetics are often compromised if we don't follow criteria which really have to do with immediate uh, or optimal implant position. And in this particular case, you can see here the good aesthetic result on a patient who had here uh, two implants, sorry, one implant placed in a central incisor. Now, what are the criteria again for um, often rejection for treatment or limitation in treatment. 
And the main um, reason really has to do with anatomy. So anatomy is often limited. And limited in multiple teeth comes more frequently than single teeth. Because what you see is that when single teeth gaps are available or seen, the adjacent teeth often are the ones who are maintaining the bone and are maintaining the soft tissue. So that's important to see. So we're looking at this here really as a uh, uh, multiple teeth can have a problem even with more anatomy. So um, we have to focus on diagnosing these patients very well, how much bone is available, how much soft tissue is available, and then we can offer the patient a treatment plan which is correct because here you can see already that this single tooth implant uh, doesn't really have a good aesthetic result uh, as it has this, this high gingival margin, so a long crown. So let's focus now on implant position then. And this is similar to single teeth, but it has an additional touch to it, and I'll bring that forward in a moment. I'll summarize again what we discussed for single teeth. This is where we're going to be focusing on. The total soft tissue height, again, is plus minus three millimeters. So when I place one implant or I place multiple implants, there's no difference in how I place the implant in a vertical position. So my gingival margin is my goal. My bone height is my goal. And this here basically means that I have in this height here three millimeters available. So the implant position will always end up between two to three millimeters when I compare the gingival margin, the ideal gingival margin, to the implant neck. So this doesn't change, single or multiple. The distance between the implant neck and the tooth doesn't change. It's always about two millimeters. So wherever the implant is close to the natural tooth, we're going to maintain about two millimeters. The buccolingual dimension doesn't change. We're going to go about two to three millimeters lingual from the contour of the tooth. So our goal is basically to maintain a thickness of bone on the buccal of an implant, which is about two millimeters. And this will allow us then to have a result, which is good. So how do we compare the single teeth then to the multiple teeth? Well, it's right here. And I'm going to be concentrating on this level here. You're looking at one area which is very particularly difficult for multiple teeth. 